You know what, Liam? It's gonna be a really nice night tonight. Oh, I'm gonna camp out tonight? Yeah, we're gonna camp out, we're gonna look at the stars. But you know what? There's this brand new sensor out I forgot to talk about. We gotta talk about it. We're gonna buy it? We're gonna buy it? Oh, I hope we can buy it someday. So before I start talking about this new sensor, I want to kind of clear up something that I talked about in the last video where, you know, I basically showed how sensors could potentially see a two and a half stop increase in ISO performance. And many, many of you commented and said, well, what about Fovian's technology? Well, Fovian's technology is unfortunately dead in the water, okay? And it is very different, okay? It uses silica to basically create a structure and not the new materials which are actually being used in solar panels to create the new types of sensors that I was talking about in that video. So there, now that we've got that cleared up, you know, they're, they are very different. It is like making a cake with salt versus sugar. <laughs> okay, that's how different they are. Now, this new sensor, okay, it's by a company called iMEC, okay? And it's very interesting because it actually kind of falls a little bit along with some of the stuff that I was talking about in that last video. Basically sensors that will be able to detect light of all wavelengths at each and every single pixel rather than dividing them up across the bear pattern and throwing out huge amounts of light. If you don't understand what that means, go back and watch my other video about it. I will link down in the description below. So, this company called IMEC, and I'll give you a little bit of repertoire here about, uh, they make some pretty interesting stuff. I mean, they, they make some cameras that, good grief, there's this one here. It's, it does 2,720,000 frames per second, okay? You know, it's a very fast camera sensor. Uh, obviously, it has a low resolution of 640 pixels by 32 pixels, designed more for scanning things than anything else. But yeah, it, they make some fast sensors. And then, and then this is the other kind of thing in there in this company's repertoire that astrophotographers should be very interested in and immediately alerted to. So number one, they like to make big sensors, okay? They've got one sensor that's 5.7 by 5.7 centimeters. Only four of them can fit on a 200 millimeter wafer, all right? And they also like to make sensors with very big pixels because they like to stress light sensitivity, which we as astrophotographers, yeah, you should be immediately perking your ears up to that one <laughs> because we hate small pixels in astrophotography. We like big pixels. So something else interesting that this company does is they actually specialize for like scientific microscope type purposes. They make a lot of sensors that have custom filters on the pixels. You know, most, if you look at Sony's repertoire of cameras, basically every single sensor that they make, they're either RGB and that's it. Those are the only filters that they make on their sensors. Well, this company, like sometimes they, make, they put up to 16 different filters in a four by four bare type square and do all sorts of things for basically, uh, microscopic imaging, you know, so that you can actually image things like the human genome and, and do things with cell structures that require more than just RGB. They need to be able to detect many, many more colors. And, and that's kind of what they specialize in. And I know many of you who are into narrowband imaging like I do, you know, you know, that kind of interests us because, you know, the potential of having a company maybe Maybe introducing a one-shot color camera that wasn't RGB, that was rather SHO, you know, sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen. That would be really cool. But yeah, these guys have the capability of doing that. They're already kind of doing it for, for medical purposes. So the big news, though, is that they have come up with this, they call it a spectricity type sensor. And the spectricity type sensor uh, has basically the ability to basically, at each pixel, break down light into different categories, into much greater numbers of categories than you can with an RGB camera. And in fact, the one that they're kind of debuting and showing here uh, does 16, it does 16 different colors. At each pixel, it's capable of categories and light that's hitting it into 16 different categories and even can go into the infrared end of the spectrum, which 
is very interesting, of course, if you've seen my last video, because it's kind of what I was talking about. You know, we're starting to see more of these types of sensors coming out. And I can guarantee you that like with the needs of like, especially the auto industry, needing these types of sensors for the types of uh, basically depth sensing that they do, you know, this, this is going to be some, a trend that's gonna continue basically. Now, what's interesting about the sensor's ability to detect 16 different colors is that it can do something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. actually, be before I get into this, I, I wanna clear up one thing, okay? Be before people comment about it, okay? Panasonic, a few years ago, uh, debuted a type of technology that they were working on that was kind of the same, okay? It is basically a, a spectrograph at each pixel. In other words, it would measure the wavelength of a light rather than just whether or not it was detected through a filter. And I have much respect for Panasonic's cameras, okay? But their image sensor group team just hasn't done a very good job, basically. I have very little faith it was three years ago that they started talking about that tech, and I've heard nothing since. Uh, to me, it's probably dead in the water, uh, a lot like their 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 <laughs> their organic image sensors, okay, which they worked on for ten years, promised us all sorts of things. And by the way, organic image sensor that is a terrible, terrible name for an image sensor. Uh, basically, there's nothing organic about the sensor, okay. It was not being they didn't use bacteria to grow the sensor. They were basically using larger atoms on the, basically the table of periodic elements. Okay, that, that's basically what that organic meant. Okay, they could have said that, but you know, they had to use the stupid word organic, probably because they thought it was a better sales tool. So anyways, this sensor that iMac is coming out with, okay, it's like a spectrograph at every single pixel. And so it can, it can currently divide light up into 16 different categories. And what's really cool about this is that it gives the camera a lot more information about the color in the picture. And they're saying that using very advanced algorithms, they use AI, the word here, which I will bash here in a second. But anyways, using these algorithms, the camera that uses this type of technology, the 16 different colors, will be able to triangulate and basically isolate correct white balance automatically with incredible accuracy, which to me as a photographer, I remember the film days. Film days, you didn't set white balance. <laughs> film was very forgiving of white balance. You could be way off and it was just forgiving, okay? And digital sensors are not forgiving of white balance. You've gotta set it exactly, and there's even extra tools for like getting white balance. And I just remember my first, my first E1 that I got, oh, it was such a nightmare learning how to use white balance. This technology will potentially make setting white balance kind of a thing of the past, where everyone will use an automatic algorithm and the algorithm will be right every single time. Okay, so that I think is kind of cool, you know, especially for daytime photography, because it's it would eliminate one more thing you have to kind of worry about and have to get right, and also have to usually correct in post-processing, which saves photographers a lot of time. So, okay, let's, let's get back to this. Um, now, the auto white balancing thing, they say that they use AI technology to do it. <laughs> okay, I've vented about this before on my channel. There is no such thing as true AI, okay? AI would mean that the singularity event would happen and that a computer would be self-aware of itself. And there is no such thing. So true AI just doesn't exist. AI is just marketing bullcrap for, it's a really smart algorithm, okay? but it's not actually thinking on its own. So that's, that's what I think about their use of the words AI here for detecting white balance. But let me guarantee you, when this shows up in a cell phone and it is coming to cell phones soon, you're gonna hear them use that phrase. But you heard it here first, <laughs> that it's not the correct term. Okay, so yeah, they are actually being evaluated for their sensor design by several different major smartphone companies. And they are claiming here that by the end of this year, by the end of the year 2024, they may actually get put into production, all right? 
Now, uh, there's, there's lots of different cool things that this can do. Okay, and here's a couple other cool things that they list. For example, with this type of sensor, which they already have working prototypes that are have been made and been shown and demonstrated, uh, this thing can actually like monitor blood flow through your skin just by imaging your skin, okay? It can actually detect hydration levels in your skin using you know, the different algorithms and so forth that they have because it can see things that the human eye can't see and it also can differentiate different things that are just impossible to differentiate through a simple RGB matrix, all right? Now, they're going through qualifications and, and so forth. And they're, like I said, they're claiming to be ready to start showing up in the, uh, in the design queue for different smartphones by the end of this year, okay? Which is actually coming up. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of just an interesting thing. Uh, I'll post a link to this article down below because uh, I wanted to bring this out, not only because there's a lot of interest in the last video, but just you know to kind of reinforce the fact that the ba basically the time of technology where the Bayer Matrix gets swept to the side and we stop wasting so much light like I explained in that video and again if you don't understand go back and watch it you know it's it's coming to fruition it's gonna be here uh, this is of course going to show up in small sensors first and I've said this before in my channel New technology always comes to small sensors first and then eventually trickles down, if you will, to larger sensors. And I know the larger sensor crowd is gonna hate that, but you know, it just means the larger sensor you have in your camera, you just longer you're gonna have to wait for this to become a reality for you. You know, which is kind of one of the reasons why I like four thirds cameras, because they have the potential to get this kind of stuff sooner <laughs> but yeah there we go that's a little bit about imic and their new multi let's see what are they calling it spectricity center center s-p-e-c-t-r-i-c-i-t-y and like i said it's very interesting it looks like it's fairly advanced technology that is you know already kind of ready to go